Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with The Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. Today we are making another video in my series for Windows Server 2022. In the last video, we showed a video demoing and uh, providing a guide on how to install Windows Server 2022 with the desktop experience. And in this video, we will be promoting that specific server to a domain controller. Now, to get started, we do have to do a little bit of planning and preparation before we do this. You'll notice that with the screen share, we have the server that I previously installed, Windows Server 2022 to. And uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, you'll notice that in our network document here, we've got our router and its IP address. DHCP and DNS is, or sorry, DHCP is disabled, however, it's providing internet DNS. Actually, I'm gonna add that because it's always good to have accurate documentation and then we have our server that we configured in the last video which has none but we're going to change this to active directory domain controller now as part of the planning process we need to come up with our plan for ad so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a domain, so we need to give it a name, and we will call that stevenwagner.com. And I guess that's pretty much it for all the documentation. <laughs> so here is the Windows Server. Now traditionally you could just fire up a command prompt, and this is the way that I used to do it, and just fire DC promo. Now, I don't know if that has changed with Windows Server 2022. However, today I'm going to launch it from the server manager. Because if you're watching this, you're probably new to doing this. And I want to be friendly and do it with the GUI. So now, since we just fired this up, you notice that the bar was scanning there. That means that it was loading the information. The loading has completed, so we can go ahead and try this now. If I remember correctly, we go to manage add roles and features and as you'll see this wizard helps you to install roles role services and or features we'll be doing a role based or feature based installation we're going to be installing this role to the server now in a multi-server environment where you have pulled in the other servers into server manager you'd be able to find them inside of this list so even running this from TN SRV01, you know, if we had SRV02, 03, 04, 05, we could actually just log into one server and install roles on all the other servers from here just to make it easy as far as management goes. But for this one, we'll be doing TN SRV01. So you'll notice that inside of the list of server roles, we have Active Directory Domain Services. When we select that, you'll notice that we need quite a bit of uh, features to install that which include the uh, RSAT tools, the remote server and administration tools, uh, the AD directory services and LDS. I don't know if that's lightweight directory services. Um, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that one. So we'll go ahead and hit add features. Now with our network design, the firewall only provides NAT and acts as a gateway for our network. It also provides internet DNS services. Now, since we're designing this as if it was being implemented into a business network environment, not only do we want the domain controller to provide domain services, but we also want it to act as a DHCP server. So we'll select that and enable it. And we need DNS services as well. So we'll add that. And once we complete all three of those, we can go ahead and hit next. This just shows the features that need to be installed, that are installed and also need to be installed for the new roles that we selected. And as we proceed through the wizard, it's now asking us to uh, start configuring the Active Directory domain services. Just a general preamble about how it manages users, computers, and other devices. And you'll notice here that things to note, ADDS, which stands for Directory Services, requires a DNS domain name server or services server to be installed on the network. Um, if you don't have one, it will be installed. So technically on the previous window, we actually didn't even need to select DNS server because it would have already been installed. 
And because we selected the DHCP server, it's going to be uh, it's providing us this information. Dynamic host control protocol allows the servers to assign or lease IP addresses to computers and other devices on the network. And then it gives us some information about the DNS. The domain name system provides the standard methods of associating names with numeric internet IP addresses. We'll just go ahead and hit next. We have a confirmation. Now there's an option right here to restart the destination server if automatically if required. I always like to restart my own servers just in case if there's something running, if I have notepad running or something that I don't want to be killed. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked, but technically you could check that if you'd like to. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit install. And this should kick off the installation. While this runs, I'm going to uh, turn off the audio and shut off the webcam and then I'll uh, speed up the video and join you when it's all done. And so you'll notice that the uh, feature installation has concluded. Now, notice that it doesn't want us to restart right away, but there are some post-installation tasks that we must uh, complete here. So you'll notice that uh, for Active Directory domain services, we need to uh, promote the server to a domain controller. And then there's also the DHCP configuration where we launch the uh, DHCP post install wizard. So what we're gonna do first is, um, we've already configured the Windows Server 2022 server with a static IP address. So we should be good to go with that. Um, so I think at this point we, uh, we're safe to go ahead and uh, promote the server to a domain controller. So when the Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard pops up, we have to choose a certain type of deployment. So we can either add a, add a domain controller to an existing domain, which we don't already have one, so we're not going to be doing that. We can add a new domain to an existing forest. We don't have an existing forest, so we don't, uh, we're not going to be choosing that option. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an entirely new forest. And so for that, we need to provide it with a root domain name. And as you'll see in the documentation here, um, in this business that we're setting up, we're setting it up for stephenwagner.com. However, in a different environment, you choose the domain that you want to set up for. So we'll just go ahead and type that into the field and hit next. Now there's, with Active Directory, there are forest functionality levels and domain functionality levels. Now, in an environment where you're going to have multiple domain controllers that are running different versions of Windows, service, Windows Server, you need to make sure that the functionality level is set to the lowest version of Windows Server that's running on the domain controllers. So for example, if we had a domain with multiple domain controllers and the oldest version was Windows Server 2012 R2, we would actually have to configure this as the level. However, since this is a brand spanking new domain, we have no other domain controllers. We're gonna to try to choose the highest level possible, which is Windows Server 2016, which is already selected by default. We don't need to touch any of these options. Options, Since this is the first domain controller in the domain, it's automatically going to be configured as a domain name system DNS server. It's also going to be configured as a global catalog. Now, a global catalog contains all the data inside of Active Directory, so that's important. And uh, as far as a read-only domain controller goes, I have a separate blog post that explains that we are not doing that. Now, just before we hit next, we have to configure a directory services restore mode password. Now, this is a very important password that in the event of any type of Active Directory corruption or disaster where you need to recover from a backup, um, in order to do a, um, I think this applies to both authoritative restores as well as non-authoritative restores, you need to have the DSRM password in order to initiate that action. Um, there's a small chance that it might only be for an authoritative restore, and that's why the password's needed. I'm not too sure off the top of my head, so uh, feel free to correct me in the comments, or I might even pop it in the description after I'm done recording this. But essentially, most people, and this is not best practice, will type in the same password as their administrative password. You don't wanna do that. You need to create a new top level password that you're going to put inside of your password documentation um, that you need to make sure that you keep this password in the event that you ever have to do that restore. And now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably just for an authoritative restore. So I'm gonna go against best practice and just use the same password as my administrator account, but we're gonna pretend that we chose a different one. So for the delegation, we can just ignore this message. It pops up on every version of Windows Server. If you want, you can read that. I'm not going to. 
we'll hit next. And then here we have the NetBIOS name. Now I'm thinking that it's gonna shorten stephenwagner.com because I have a feeling that's a little bit too long. No, it actually accepted it. For the NetBIOS domain name, go figure. Anyways, so we'll just leave this. And this is where you have the domain name, which is uh, something something.com, and then you actually have the domain. So sometimes if the link's not a problem, you know, if it's something.com, the NetBIOS domain name would be something. Company name. So we'll just go ahead and hit continue. Now for this part, specify the location of the ADDS database log files in Sysfall. Now it's been some time since I've read the Microsoft documentation, but in previous versions of Windows Server, whenever you created a domain controller, they always recommended putting I think all three, the database log files and the sysvol folder on a different volume with different levels of RAID protection. Now, I've never met someone who's put it on another, vo on another volume. Um, I have in some customer deployments, I'm not gonna say how many, um, but technically best practice would be to do that unless if it's changed in server 22. Now with this specific virtual machine, I don't have multiple volumes set up and this is just a how-to guide and tutorial. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit next and stick it on the C drive. And then it's just, uh, we go ahead and review our selections just to make sure that we didn't screw anything up. We got stephenwagner.com, NetBIOS is Stephen Wagner. We have our forest functionality level and our domain functionality level. And it looks like everything's good. And actually, if you wanna see what happens, you can actually hit view script and it'll actually pull up the Windows PowerShell script that it created that'll promote this to a domain controller. And when we hit next, it's just gonna check the uh, server for prerequisites. Now, if you didn't have a static IP configured, I believe that it would fail the prerequisite check. So we'll just go inside of here, check this out. So all the prerequisite checks passed, but there were some warnings. So let's just run through these quickly. Windows Server 2022 domain controllers have a default for the security setting named allow cryptography algorithms compatible with NT4 that prevents weaker crypto. Yeah, so we can ignore that. Delegation, that was to do with DNS, we can ignore that. Completed, we're good to go. We're gonna go ahead and hit install. And at this point, I'm going to turn off the camera, mute the audio, and speed this section up. And I have a feeling that it is just about to restart the server. And if I'm right, this should ask us to log in, but now instead of logging into the local user database, we should be logging onto the new domain that we just created. And actually, while we wait for that to come up, so we've got services active directory domain controller, and we're also gonna add DHCP server. And so up here, when we put some of the information, we'll also come up with the THCP server information. So eventually when we do configure the DHCP server, we want it to have a network range of 192.168.10.100, and we want it to assign up to 200. So essentially once we configure the DHCP server, it'll hand out IPs between 192.168.10.100 and 192.168.10.200, which gives us about 100 usable IP addresses. You can see that this restarted now, so we'll hit Control Delete. And now you can see that we're logging on to the domain, Stephen Wagner, username is administrator. Now, I remember vaguely on previous versions of Windows Server that it would actually warn you telling you that the administrator account um, on the local system is being destroyed or changed and bringing over your password to the domain. I didn't see that, maybe it was in the text, but just keep that in mind. And we now have it configured. So if we click on start and type in active directory, we've got users and computers, domains and trusts. So we'll just open up domains and trusts. And this is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated.
Oh, and actually while we wait for this, I'm gonna right click on the networking icon, open network and internet settings, then go to change adapter options. And I think that during the process of promotion to domain controller, it'll actually change the DNS values. So you'll notice that originally we configured the preferred DNS server as the IP address of the router, but that is no longer the case. Um, as part of the DC promo process, creating an Active Directory domain, um, it actually changed this value to 127.0.0.1. That is a loopback IP address. So any DNS requests that this system makes, it loops back to that internal loopback adapter. Um, think of it, it's just like localhost and it just it's another IP address that just points directly to itself. And we still have to open up the Active Directory. So let's try users and computers. So here we've just opened up Active Directory users and computers. And we can see the domain stephenwagner.com. We can expand that. We've got computers. We haven't joined any computers to the domain, so we're expecting this to be empty. And then we also have our users. Now, a lot of these are default accounts. You'll see the administrator account, which is what we're currently logged in with. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new user account for myself called Stephen Wagner. Username is gonna be stephenw at stephenwagner.com. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna configure a password. We're not going to require the user to change his password on next login, and we're gonna configure it to never expire just because this is a test environment. You would never do that in production. But so what we've done here is I've created a new user account on the domain for Steven Wagner. And you'll notice that this is just a typical user. So this user has no administrative access. It can't configure any services. It can't do anything. Right now we're logged in with the administrator account and for non for all non IT related functions and actually even for some IT related functions we're actually going to use that user account instead just so that if that account were to ever become compromised it wouldn't actually put the system at risk because it would only have access to the resources that that specific user has um, so we're not going to log into that as yet but we've just created that now I don't know if there's much else to show here right off the bat Here's that Active Directory Domains and Trusts, so we'll just maximize this window, expand the domain, and there's nothing to show because it is a fresh domain. This is where you would normally go to raise the domain functionality if you had to raise it. We're already running at the latest version, which is Windows Server 2016, so there's no option, but this is where you would do it if you're running older versions of Windows Server. You just decommissioned all your older domain controllers and wanted to bring the version up. The one last thing that I almost forgot to do is we want to configure our DHCP server. So to do that, I think we can jump back into Server Manager. And this will take a couple seconds to load, but I think that once it's done loading, we should see the DHCP server show up inside of the roles and server groups. And actually with that, uh, after we installed the ADD, uh, ADDS and the DHCP server, oh, there's the flag right there. So it's telling us there are pending notifications. So we'll do this and there is complete DHCP con uh, con configuration. So essentially this just tells us that uh, we're performing these steps to complete the configuration of the DHCP server on the target computer. So we're gonna hit next, specify credentials used to authorize this DHCP server in Active Directory domain services. So we're gonna use the administrative account and we're gonna commit. It's done, we can go ahead and close it. And the DHCP server is now installed. So now that it's installed, we have to configure it. So we'll just click on start. DHC now I do a lot of shortcuts, I just type in the service's name, but a lot of people, you can actually click on start, go to Windows Administrative Tools, and here's a list of all the installed MMCs. So we've got the Active Directory Administrative Center, Domains and Trusts, Sites and Services, We've got DHCP, we've got DNS, Event Viewer, and a handful of other things. I like to be quick, so I just hit start and then just type in the first three characters. Actually, I just want to jump in here. I've, I don't know if I've seen this before. Interesting. We'll explore that later. But so what we're going to do is we're we'll click on start. We'll type in DHCP to open up the DHCP server settings. 
We're going to maximize this window. Here's the DHCP server that's running on the server. Now, if we expand this, you'll notice we got server options, policies, and filters. We have no scope that's been defined yet. So under IPv4, we're going to right click on that. We're going to click on new scope, and this will create a new scope for the DHCP server. We'll hit next. We'll give it a name. We'll call this TN DHCP scope. And we'll just copy paste that to the description as well. So now here's the range of IP addresses. So uh, as we de defined in this document on our network document, we'll start it with 192.168.10.100 and we'll take it to 192.168.10.200. The subnet mask that will be assigned to clients is uh, a 24 length subnet, 255.255.255.0. Now here's where you can configure exclusions. So let's say that you had something in the 50 to 60 range, you can configure an exclusion. So you don't actually have to create two different ranges. You can just have one and then set up an exclusion zone. We, we're not using that. So we can just go ahead and hit next. This is the lease time. We're just going to leave it to the standard eight days. Now here's where you configure DHCP options. And so the thing is that it's fine and dandy if our DHCP server is providing IP addresses to our network devices. But the thing is, is that if it's only giving it an IP address, these devices won't have a gateway, so they won't know where to route the packets to, so they won't be able to get out to the internet. And they also won't know the, D, uh, the DNS server address too. So the thing is that it won't be able to do DNS uh, name lookups to IP addresses. So yes, we want to configure these options now. So right here, it's asking us to specify the router and default gateway. Now, this is going to be the gateway that we configured in one of the earlier videos, the PFSense firewall, and the IP address of that is 192.168.10.1. Now, we add this to the list, which means that every IP that gets issued to a network device, it will also tell that network device to use this IP as a default gateway. Now, in this window, domain and DNS services, we're telling the DHCP server to tell DHCP clients that the parent domain is stephenwagner.com. That's great. That's the uh, Active Directory domain that we just configured. And it's also telling all the clients that the DNS server IP is 192.168.10.10. And if you had multiple domain controllers, um, you would actually put all of the, the IP addresses of the DNS servers inside here. We only have one, the one that we just promoted. So that's what we're going to put in. We're going to do next. Now, WINS is something very old. We don't need that, so we can hit next. And then it's asking us if we want to activate the scope now. So we'll choose yes, which is by default, and next. And now we have a functioning DHCP server. And that's about it for creating an Active Directory domain as well as a DNS server and DHCP server. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, please like this video if you already haven't. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, this is a series of videos uh, coming up soon. We're going to also have uh, joining a Windows 10 um, Windows Workstation to a domain on the Windows Server 22. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's been a long day. We're going to have a video showing how to join a uh, Windows 10 machine to a uh, to the domain that we just created. Uh, we'll also have another video showing how to uh, add member servers to the Active Directory. So anyways, leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts on the video and uh, have yourself a great day.